Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryan here, the Computer Certification Bulldog, and in today's CCNA 5-Minute Video Boot Camp, we might go a few seconds over that because I've got some really valuable information here for your OSPF Hub & Spoke Config Checklist. Now I know from experience, having been a CCNA student of course at one point and having worked with thousands of them since then, that when you go through the routing protocols, you know, there's this process where you hit RIP first and you hit static routing, it's like, okay, you know, it's new, but you're getting used to it, and, you know, it's not that hard. So you, you get that down, then you move on to EIGRP, and sure, there are more details there, and we've got wildcard mass and autonomous systems to worry about, but again, not a tremendous amount of detail yet. And then you hit OSPF, wham! And all of a sudden, you got all these LSAs, you got all these network types, you got all these different kinds of areas, you got a lot of different details with that. And I want to share something with you that really worked for me when I started studying OSPF because I too got overwhelmed with it. You know, you're just looking at it, you're just going, wow, there's so much here. If you just break it down to the smallest part and make a little written checklist during your studies that really sticks with you during exams and also when you're working with it in the real world. Because you've always got that little checklist go, okay, I got this, I got this, I got this. It's just like a pilot does, just like anyone does, really, in that kind of job where you're saying, okay, I checked this off, I did this, I checked this off, I did this. It really works well for configuring networks and passing certification exams as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at that in just a moment. I did want to thank you, as you've seen on the screen, for the tremendous success that you made out of my CCNA success series on Amazon. And the first ebook debuted at number one in the Amazon.com Kindle Store Computer Networking section. So I thank you for that. Just a reminder, if you don't have your copy yet, you don't need a Kindle to read it. Any Kindle app on any phone, Mac, I, uh, uh, PC, and just about anything else out there, if you don't have a Kindle app for it, you can download one. So let's go ahead and dive straight into OSPF here. Now, again, a lot of detail here. And talking about network types. I'm not going to list every OSPF network type here, but the three main ones for the CCNA are the broadcast, the point-to-point, -point, and the NBMA. Now with broadcast networks, that's our default for an Ethernet segment, and while we can select the DR and the BDR using some of the tools we're going to work with here in a minute, it's not a requirement. Now with a point-to-point -point network, you don't even have a designated router or a backup designated router. What you end up with, let me bring up the live equipment for a moment. Instead of seeing full slash DR here, if this were a point-to-point -point network, you'd see full and then a, just a dash here. And I have a separate video on my YouTube channel for that, so if you haven't seen that before, you might want to look that up. But the NBMA network, this is the one we really have to look out for. Because we have an election, and we have to fix it. We have to make sure the hub wins. And it's not enough for the hub to win the election. We want to stop the spokes from even participating in it. Now on the hub for the NBAMA network, we need something called a neighbor statement. And for your NA exams and your future ones, remember, it's not enough just to know the command. You need to know where the command goes. You know, if you were choosing this on a multiple choice question, they might say, you know, okay, that's fine, you know the neighbor statement, but do you know where it goes? You know, does it go in the global config? Does it go in the OSPF config? Does it go in the interface config? Because that's the kind of question I like to ask in my practice questions. So we need those in the config itself. Let's go up to router 1, which is actually the hub router here. I'll do a show config. You can see on my serial interface, which is my NBMA interface, I don't have anything here related to OSPF. I'm not changing the priority and I'm not running anything else there. What I am running here under OSPF are these neighbor statements. And again, they go in the OSPF config itself. Now another good way, let me show you another command here. We'll go a little long here because I want to share this with you. Show IP OSPF interface followed by the interface name. This is a great way to see what the network type is for that interface. You can see what the cost is. We know when we hear the word cost it's OSPF. Designated router is the state and there is no backup designated router on this network. That's the way we want our NBMA network to be. There's the priority of one. We did not change that. And we just left it alone because we know we're going to go to the spokes 
routers 2 and 3 in this case and we're going to use a command called IPOSPF priority to prevent them from taking part in the election and making sure the hub wins with a priority of 1. Now a little real world versus theory here for you and here's how I would handle this. Now the spokes do not need neighbor statements but some people think they do and I've seen them in live real world configs I've seen the neighbor commands on the spokes. It doesn't hurt anything, but for the CCNA exam, I would be prepared to demonstrate that I know they only go on the hub. You know what I mean? If I had to config it, if I was given a multiple choice question, however they want to do it, I would dem I would demo I would demo straight that uh, I know the neighbor statement only needs to go on the hub. Now what the spokes do need is to be disqualified from that election and we do that with a command called IPOSPF priority but we do that at the interface level. Let's go back down to router 2 and let's do a show config. Now you'll notice here in the serial interface, my NBMA network interface, I do have an OSPF related command, IP OSPF priority zero. That goes on the interface, it does not go under the OSPF config. Now my OSPF config here is very straightforward, I got a couple of network statements and that's it. I do not need neighbor statements on my spokes. Here's a, here, actually the same command but run on router 2 and notice that we do see that it's a non-broadcast network type cost of 64 that's what we expect on a serial interface but do notice that the state is DR other that means other than a DR or BDR and on top of that the priority is zero and there is no BDR on this network so that's a good checklist for you as far as that exam goes or that network type goes let's go over that one more time just real quick on the hub you need the neighbor statements. Those go in the that goes in the OSPF config. You can leave the interface priority at one, which is the default, because on the spokes, what we're going to do instead of putting neighbor statements on the spokes, we're going to put IP OSPF priority zero on the interfaces before we get started. That's a good checklist to help you with your NBMA networks. I've got more video checklists coming, and again, I invite you out to join me on Twitter on YouTube, on our blog, and on Facebook, and by the end of 2011, a brand new, 100% brand new website. <sighs> Can't wait for that myself. Thanks for watching today's video. I'm Chris Bryant, the Computer Certification Bulldog.